All right, welcome to Ponch Church this morning. Praise the Lord. Did you ever play What's Missing? Did you ever play that game? If you look at a photo and you decide what's missing, it's kind of a, a children's game, but then they make hard ones for, uh, for adults. You see what's missing or what's not there, or what's supposed to be there. Anyway, what's missing? And uh, if you look at my airplane photo, you will realize that you don't ever want to fly on that plane. There's something missing. Well, uh, the other photo up there is me in the 80s, in the early 80s, on a Christian TV show, and I was a guest. And so I'm teaching the Bible on this Christian TV show in the early 80s. And I'm actually going to teach from the text I used on that, on that uh, TV program like 41 years ago. And it's something that this young guy up there, he knew and lived for uh, years and years of his life. He knew and lived, but I had let it slip. It's very easy to let it slip. But then about 10 months ago, I rediscovered what this young preacher knew. I rediscovered it, and I rediscovered it the way I understood it back then. I had a version of what I understood, but I didn't understand it clearly or correctly. So I'm looking at this faith, listening to this guy, and I'm thinking, there's something missing in our faith, what I'm going to call modern faith. There's something missing. Uh, I'm going to use modern faith as opposed to Bible faith. There's something missing in our modern faith, but it's not just our modern faith. Listen, the disciples were missing it also. Literally, all 12 of these guys missed what I'm going to teach you about today. They didn't get it. They didn't get it till after the resurrection. All those years with Jesus. Here's, here's modern faith or disciple faith or faith like most of us in this generation and, and what the disciples had. And, and, and listen to this and see if this is not what they had. I believe in Jesus' faith, right? They had that faith. I believe in Jesus. I believe you are God, your master, your Lord. They had that kind of faith. They said it out their mouth. You're our Lord. You're our master. We believe you are God. They believed in his miracles, right? They, they believed in them. They, they saw them with their own eyes. They, they were dumbfounded, really, at the beginning and pretty much through the whole three, three uh, plus years. At one point they said, we believe your words are truth. Who else has the words of life? You're the truth. They had that kind of faith. They believed that you can save me, that only you can save me, that only you can take me to heaven. They had that kind of faith. See, we have this kind of faith today. We have all these things. They had all this, and we do too. We believe in Jesus. We believe he is God, a master and Lord. We believe in his power. We believe his words are the truth. We believe that only he can save me, that only Jesus can take me to heaven. And, and, and I'll call this thief on the cross faith. See, the thief on the cross had all this faith. The disciples, more was expected of them, but they had this kind of faith also. And I'm submitting today and for the next few weeks that something's missing in this kind of faith. That something is missing. That young guy up there, he talked about it that day 41 years ago. I'm going to talk about it today, but something's missing. It's, it's not, that's not Bible faith. That's normal faith. That's common faith. That's what uh, most of us in the church today have. And I'm submitting there's something missing. There's a huge piece missing. And not only is it missing, very few in life have ever found it. Very few have ever discovered what I'm going to talk to you about today. Very few. I've, I'm 70 years old. I've lived a long time, 50 years a Christian. And I'm telling you, very few people understand what we're going to talk about today. That guy understood it, and I now understand it again. <laughs> Something huge is missing. It's just like this plane. <laughs> you, you don't have much of a Christianity if you're missing a whole wing. <laughs> you, 
And you know, so you, you, it's not going to work right. It's not going to fly. It's not ever going to get off the ground. It's, it's just going to spin in circles. The last time I taught, a couple weeks ago, we looked at Matthews five times in the, in the book of Matthews. Uh, in the book of Matthew, five times Jesus says, Oh, ye of little faith, or where's your faith, or why'd you doubt? Why didn't you uh, use your faith? You have no faith. They had no clue that something was missing. They're like, what do you mean I have no faith? I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you're God. I believe you're Master. I believe you're Lord. I believe in your miracles. I believe you can save me. What do you mean I don't have any faith? What do you mean? Same thing happens today. If you tell somebody you don't have Bible faith, they'd be like, what are you talking about? Of course I do. <clears throat> and I'm submitting, no, you have disciple faith. You have modern faith. You have thief on the cross faith. Thank God for it. But it's not the kind of faith I'm going to talk to you about today. Bible faith. What he was saying is, guys, disciples, listen, you're not using your faith right. <laughs> what he was talking about is, you, you're not yet applying your faith in life. You're not applying it to everyday situations in life. You're not applying, you're not using your faith in every situation with every person all day, every day. Let's say those words together. All day, every day. That's what we're talking about. All day, every day faith. And the text that uh, I used 40 plus years ago is the same one we're going to use today. Look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. I'm going to use King James just because I used it back then, actually. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. And I'm submitting to you, this is what's missing in faith. And it is a huge a plane missing a wing. This is a huge part that, that is missing, and it makes a huge difference. And the part we're going to pull out today of this, there's a lot actually in there. Do not let my words or my sayings, do not let them depart from your eyes. Do not let them depart from your eyes. That's the part we're going to pick out. Verse 21, let them, what? My words and my sayings, let them not depart from your eyes. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Now, do not let it depart. How often does that mean you can let it depart? How, how, how much time during the day are you supposed to let it depart from your eyes? How, 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 uh, much can you kind of go back and forth and maybe not look at the word or say, how many areas in life can you not look at his word or his sayings? According to Proverbs, none, right? The word depart means to leave or deviate from. In other words, never. Never leave it, never deviate from it. So Bible faith then only looks at the word or my sayings. My word or my sayings. That's all faith ever looks at. My word, my sayings. You could say now in Jesus' uh, 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 time, he would say my teachings. So the scripture says, give attention to them, incline thy ear to them, and only look at them. Keep them in your heart. Think about them. Meditate on them. And then look what he says. For they are life. Do you realize this is where life comes from? They are life to those who find them. People are looking for life in everything. Everywhere. Did you even look at the beach this weekend? You could hardly see the sand. There were so many human beings. You could hardly see the sand. People are looking, are looking for life. They're looking for life everywhere and in everything. 
And Proverbs says, I found it. Here's where life is. You're looking for it in this or in that, in this person or that person, in this thing or that thing. You're looking for life. Here it is. Do not let my words and my sayings depart from your eyes. That's where it is. And then what happens? You find life. And then as an added bonus, you'll find health. That's what I've walked in my whole life. I've walked in health my whole life. Because I've practiced this work. That young guy we saw up there, he knew this. And I practiced it. I've lived it. The Bible's true. You find life and you find health for all your flesh. Same thing God told Joshua. After Moses departed, Joshua was going to lead Israel into the promised land. And there had been five books written. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Now Joshua, this is book six. And God starts it off talking to Joshua and he says, This book of the law, what Moses has written down for you, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. You see, see any uh, familiar words? Yes. Not depart, right? Not depart. When God speaks directly to you and he says, Rick, don't let this depart. Don't deviate from this. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. As far as I know, there's nothing else except day or night. It's all, you know, every day is composed of day and night. That thou mayest observe to do all, uh, to do according to all that is written therein, for then you'll make thy way prosperous and then you'll have good success. Proverbs says you'll find life and health and now God tells Joshua, you'll find prosperity and success. That's what you'll find. If, right? These things don't depart. You don't let them depart. All day, every day faith. Every situation with everyone, all day, every day faith. I, I'll submit the other side of that coin to you, that if you lack these things, if you lack uh, uh, if you let these sayings and words depart from your eyes, if you go and chase after other things, you let it depart. You forsake life, health, prosperity, and success. <laughs> if you don't have these things in your life, check this, check this area. What are you looking at? Bible faith then only looks at my words and my sayings. Here's the way I'm going to say it to you today so we can kind of get it and bring it into modern language. Bible faith only looks, this will change your life. It will change your life. Bible faith only looks at the solution. That's all. It only looks at the goal. It only looks at the desire. It only looks at the solution. The definition of goal is an aim or a desired result. Bible faith only looks at the solution. Listen, isn't that what he said? Do not let your eyes depart from my sayings, depart from my words. And I'm saying God's solution to life is in those sayings and in those words. Life, health, prosperity, and success. Do not let your eyes depart from the solution to life. Never, look at this one, never let your eyes look at the problem. See, this is, this is why it's so rare. Because pretty much all we do as humans is look at the problem. We look at what's wrong. We look at what's missing. But God says, only look at the solution. All day, every day. Only what he wants, or even you could say what you want. Only look at the solutions in life. Only look at the goals in life. 
Only look at the desires in your life. Do you know that one day Jesus asked a man, he said, what, and the man was blind, he said, what do you want? That's what he asked. He literally asked a man, what do you want? And the man was blind. And I'm telling you, listen, what I'm teaching today works on blindness even. Surely it'll work on your life and my life if we'll work it, right? Isn't that what he says? Do not let my word depart from your eyes. Only look at it. Only look at the solution. That's what he said to Bartimaeus. On the road to Jericho one day, Jesus and, and all that were following him, actually I believe it said many were following him that day, there was a beggar, blind Martimaeus, the son of Timaeus, set by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many, there were many around Jesus that day and following Jesus, charged him that he should stop saying that. <laughs> Hold his peace or shut up. Everybody say shut up. How many wanted to tell me to shut up before? Well, you just get to it. That's what they said to Bartimaeus. They said, shut up, Bart. And I'm telling you, your own mind will tell you to shut up. You start looking only at the solution, your mind will say, no. You have to look at the problem. I'm making you look at the problem. I'm forcing you to look at the problem. That's what this group was doing. The whole crowd was saying, be quiet. You can't do what you're doing. Your own mind will resist you. Your own mind doesn't really even mind uh, matter. It doesn't matter to your flesh, to your carnal mind. It doesn't matter if you believe in Jesus. You won't even get any resistance to that. It, it stopped resisting you a long time ago on that. I believe in Jesus. You won't feel any resistance whatsoever. Now, somebody who's never believed in Jesus and they say that yeah there may be great resistance but you've been saying it for years I've been saying it for 50 years no resistance to that but I'll guarantee you that if I start looking only at the solution and not the problem my mind will rebel oh no you're going to focus on this problem <laughs> on what's missing and, and Bartimaeus' mind would have said, Bartimaeus, you're blind. You're never going to see again. You're a beggar. You're not worth his time. These are just thoughts, you know. He had to deal with these like everybody else does. Look at you. Look at your condition. You can't change this. You're blind. Now, back then, a lot of times God said, well, if something was wrong with you, it was because God was punishing you, that if you suffered some indignity or some suffered some pain, it was because of your sin or because God was punishing you. And so they, they believed that. And they, they thought, that's why you're suffering. Well, today, we're a little more refined. We don't really say that. We don't really say, oh, you're suffering because you're shamed. But you know what we say? You know what a lot of Christians say? You know what a lot of churches and denominations say? A lot of preachers say? They say, well, you're suffering for the glory of God. That God's will is to put you through this. This is your cross to bear. This is your thorn in the flesh. And they use scripture. And they, they say, this is for your glory. So all these people that day, they could have had a lot of these things. They were telling Bartimaeus, no, no, no. Do not just look at the desire, at what you want, at the solution. Don't do that. And the world and your flesh and the devil will tell you the same thing today. Bombard your mind. Try to overwhelm you with the situation and circumstances. But Bartimaeus, I'm telling you, is our hero. <laughs> Proverbs said, do not let the solution depart from your eyes. Look what Bartimaeus did. But he cried the more a great deal. They said, Bartimaeus, stop. And he's like, I'm not stopping. This is the kind of faith that you, that you need to have. 
that, that when everything's resisting you, you must look at the problem. You must look at what's wrong. You must look at what's missing. You must look at, at uh, other people. You must look at anything except the Word of God. And Proverbs says, do not let the Word depart from your eye. And Bartimaeus had that kind of faith. He was like, he cried all the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. All he could see was mercy. Jesus, have mercy on me. I want to see. This guy was different than everybody else. The whole crowd was telling him to be quiet. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. You see how quickly the crowd changes? <laughs> they were like, be quiet, be quiet. Oh, Bartimaeus, say, hey, Jesus wants you. We knew it all along, you know, great job. And then look what Jesus said to him. This is, a, this is amazing to me. It really is. He stopped, Jesus stopped, and he called Bartimaeus. And he, Bartimaeus, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? A more modern English version just says, What do you want? Let's all say it together. What do you want? That's, Jesus literally asked this blind man, What do you want? He's calling out to him, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, What do you want? That I want to see. And that's all he could focus on. Isn't this, isn't this great? It's all he could see. This is a great story. Blind Bartimaeus. All he could focus on was, have mercy on me. I want to see. That's all he did. He just And they said, no, you can't. You can't. You can't. Stop. You can't look at that. You can't look at, at, at your sight. You can't look at... God's mercy. You can't look at the solution. You can't look at his word. You must look away. And he said, no, I want to see. What do you want me to do? What do you want? And look at. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. What made him whole? What did Jesus say made him whole? My power has made you whole. God's love has made you whole. You let the crowd tell you to stop focusing on the solution has made you whole. What did he say made you whole? Your faith. I mean, this is a great story, but it's not just a great story. This is a human being, folks. It's a human being that applied faith to a real-life situation. <laughs> How many would agree with me that blindness is a fairly serious situation? This is a serious situation. It, would, it calls for your attention. I'm blind. <laughs> and he wouldn't even look at it. All he could look at was the solution. Jesus can make me see. That's all, he could, that's all he could think of. That's all he could look at. He heard of Jesus, and he just started crying out. According to your faith. And the biggest change you can make today, to, like Bartimaeus did that day, the biggest change you can make in your faith today is only look at his word and his sayings. Only. Only. Only the solution, the goal, the dream, the desire. Learn from Bartimaeus. That's faith. Your mind will say, this can't change. This has never changed. Nobody's ever changed this. And you know what you can say? All the more, yes, I can. Isn't that what he did? Be quiet. And he cried all the more. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do it. You can never do this. Yes, I can. You can't focus just on the Word of God. Yes, I can. You can't just look at the solutions in life, at the goal and at the dream and the desire. Yes, I can. 
That's what Bartimaeus said. He said, I'm not stopping. This is faith. And we apply it to real life. A couple of areas, we said, well, you find life and health and uh, prosperity and success. You can take this verse, and, and people listening uh, online, you can take this verse, by his stripes I am healed, Amen. and you can walk in health your whole life. Amen. Literally, you can walk in health your whole life. Amen. You say, but the world doesn't walk in health. I know. They're not doing what I'm teaching you to do today. You go ask people if they are. Have you been just believing and focusing on the word only regarding your health? That by his stripes I am healed, by his stripes I am healed, by his stripes I am healed. Is that all you focused on for 50 years? Yes, for me. I never entertained anything else. Sickness would come on my body and say, by his stripes I'm healed. I've had days where I couldn't even get out of bed. By his stripes I'm healed. Why? Because the Bible says, do not let it depart. <laughs> That's all faith ever looks at. Jesus expects us to use our faith in real life situations, just like Bartimaeus did. Here's another one. I've lived by this my whole life. Let it slip lately. I've repented and and got back to it. But my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This is a Bible verse. The Bible says, do not ever let that verse, not day or night, do not ever let that verse depart from your eyes. You see lack, you see this didn't work out, that didn't work out, uh, mountains of debt, you see all kinds of things. Do not, look at it. The Bible says faith. <laughs> it's like you ever see these thoroughbred horses with blinders on? They put blinders on. They can't see anything except right in front of them. They can't see that there's 10 other horses over there trying to bang them and, and knock them out of the way. Do not let them depart. That's a word from God. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Paul said that, but Jesus said the same thing. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything gets added to you. Do what I'm teaching you today. Just stubbornly refuse to look at what's wrong, what's missing. We look at that plane to begin with. We couldn't even hardly see a plane, right? All we could see is, it doesn't have a wing. And your eye goes right for it. What's missing and what's wrong? But that's not faith. I'm as, I'm as flabbergasted as you are that faith works on blindness? No. We look at that and we're like, that's out of my league. <laughs> you know, blind, works on blindness? That's how powerful this is. Well, I use it. I use faith to work on self, to work on character. That I, I have stood up for 50 years and said, I want to be a peaceful person. I want to be a joyful person. I want to be a loving person. I want to be a merciful person. I want to be a kind person. One thing I've never said, and Nina can agree with this, is I want to be a perfect person. This has not happened. But I do want to be these other things. Why? Because that's how Jesus is. That's how he walked. That's how we're supposed, we're supposed to live peaceful, joyful. See, listen, we, we stand up and we have this disciple faith and we say, I believe in Jesus, but we live just as stressed out as the world. Why would anyone... Want to believe in Jesus? They're like, well, you're missing out on all the fun, what they think, and you're still stressed out. At least we get to numb ourselves. That's what the world does, right? They just numb themselves. 
They're so stressed out, they just, they just fill their body and mind full of anything they can get their hands on almost. I was just reading an article the other day that, that two states have allowed uh, mushrooms. They, they call them nice, you know, sounds like a nice name, mushrooms, but it's basically just, it's just hallucinogen drugs. Yeah, and it's like, oh, here you go. It ruined a whole generation. I came from that generation. It ruined a whole generation. <laughs> but people want it. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not judging them. I'm not even faulting them. People want joy. They want peace. They want relief from this thing that we call life here on this earth. I want to be this way. I want to be like Jesus. I want other people to see that. Listen to this one. This is a great one. Works on your health. Works on prosperity. Works on your character. You can actually become a better person with faith. Works on your character. You can become more like Jesus. And here's a great one. It works on other people. Everybody say other people. Other people. Finally. Everybody say finally. Finally, something we can do to change other people. This seems to be the number one goal in the world, <laughs> change people. Well, this works on them. What do you mean? Never look at what's wrong. Never look at the problem. Never look at what's missing. Only look at what? The Word of God. Only look at the solution. Only look at what you want. This actually works for other people. You say, how do you know it works? Well, Paul, Paul did it. He worked it. 1 Corinthians 13 says that love believes, uh, some translations that believes all things, but uh, one or two translations says believes the best about everyone. Believes the best. What does that mean? That's all you look at. It believes the best. Today, for your homework, I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 1 and chapter 3 and read Paul's prayers for you and I. Amen. This is how you look at other people. This is what you do with other people. What do you do? You keep your eye on the Word. This is what he said. He prayed this for us. Paul prayed this for me and you and the church at Ephesus and all Christians, that you would have wisdom and that you would be enlightened that you would know the hope of his calling, that you would know the riches of the glory of his inheritance, that you would know these things. This is what Paul prayed for imperfect people. <laughs> this is what he thought about me. I want you to know this, Rick. I want you to know wisdom and enlightenment. I want you to know the hope of your calling. I want you to know the riches of the glory of the inheritance of Jesus. I want you to listen to this one. I want you to know the greatness of his power. I want you to be strengthened with might in the inner man. I want you to know the love of God. Amen. Paul prayed this for us, for other people. Why did he do this? Was he wasting his time? I think it works. I think we can help others. <laughs> we can pray. I want you to know the love of God. And he finishes with, I want you to be filled with all the fullness of God. This was his prayer for us. This is, listen, this is my prayer for you. It's all I look at. I want to get to a place where I don't even see you anymore. I just see this prayer. Amen. This is what I want. This is what Bible faith does. See, Bible faith, isn't that what he said? He said, don't let my word depart from your eyes. Only look at the solutions in life. Only the solutions. That's not natural to us. That's not normal, right? It's not what people usually look at. One more story, and then we're done for the day. Thanks for staying with me. One more. I'll, try, I'll make this one quick, and then... Uh, Maybe we'll pick up here next week. 
Matthew 14, 27, we're talking about only look at the word, at the say, my word, he says, my sayings, or only look at the solutions, only look at the goal, only look at the, the uh, answer, only look at the dream that God has given you. Be of good cheer, Jesus says, it is I, be not afraid. Now, the disciples are on a boat. Jesus told them to go the other side. He'd meet them over there. They're on a boat. This is not the story where the boat's filling with water. This is basically a story where there's a strong wind, which means waves. If you've ever been by the water where strong wind, that means waves. So wind and waves, and they're toiling, the Bible says, against the wind. They're really trying to row hard, uh, you know, just to, just to stay afloat. And Jesus comes walking on the water to them, and they, of course, were sure it was a ghost, and he says, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Great story so far. Now it's interesting, Mark records this story, but there's no walking on water in Mark's version. He didn't, uh, maybe he was mad at Peter the day he was writing this, but he didn't include this little walk on water. Or maybe Peter was like, don't put that story in there. I, I sunk, <laughs> you know. I don't know, but Mark leaves it out. He, Mark does have some interesting things to say. He said that they were toiling and troubled, you know, and, and, that, and, and listen to what Mark said. He said, they didn't consider the miracle of the loaves. They had just seen the loaves and fish. And Mark says, they didn't consider the miracle of the loaves, so their heart was hard. They didn't consider what Jesus had just done for them, so their heart was hard. In other words, they didn't have a clue how to use their faith in real life situations. So Matthew adds this walk on water version. Same story though. But when he saw the wind, this is, this is Peter, he's actually walking on water. But when, the, when he saw the wind, what are you supposed to look at? Do not let them depart from your eyes. My word. What did Jesus say to him? Come. Come. So according to Proverbs, what was Peter supposed to look at? Jesus said to come. Jesus said I could do it. Jesus said I can do it. And then what did the, what did the Bible say he looked at? But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. This is what happens. You get your eyes off the word. I don't care. It doesn't take but one second. You get your eyes off the word and you will sink immediately. There is no, oh, let's see. It's going to take a couple of weeks for me to get it all the way under. No, you're under instantly. Beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. You know, at least he believed in Jesus could save him. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and, and said something to him. I wonder what Jesus said to him. What do you think? Here's Peter, you know. None of the other disciples were brave enough to get out of the boat. He walked on water. Certainly Jesus is going to commend him for that. But he got afraid and he, and he, and he began to sink and, and he, he stopped using his faith, stopped applying faith to a real-life situation. Oh, we understand. I understand, Peter. I understand. It's hard. You know, you, you can't help yourself. You've got to look at the problem. I know you're consumed and overwhelmed with thoughts and emotions and, and situations. Uh, I know that you realize in your mind, I can't do this. I can't walk on water. What was I thinking? You know, and, and if you ask normal people, who do not have Bible faith, they're not going to say anything to Peter uh, 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 about faith. They're going to say, you know, good try, Pete. You know, I'm sorry you sank. I'm sorry it didn't work out. Uh, you know, nobody can do that. I, I mean, don't feel bad. Uh, uh, this situation can't change. It's impossible. And nowadays, a lot of us, what we'll do, we'll even blame Jesus. Well, it wasn't his will. If he had wanted Peter to walk on water, Peter would have walked on water. Well, Peter did walk on water, and it was his will because he said, what did he say to him? Come, come walk on water. <laughs> come on out here.
And we come up with these crazy ideas when things don't happen like we want in life. And we think, well, it wasn't God's will. He didn't want it to work out. Yes, he did. He said he did. You stopped looking. You stopped looking at his word, his sayings. You stopped looking at the solution. Now, when I say you, I'm included in this too. I let, I let my faith slip for years. I, I slid right back in that faith that that young guy had, that we saw his picture, that faith that he had. I let that faith slip for most of my life and got into, I believe in Jesus' faith. And I completely got off of, do not let the solution get out of your vision. <laughs> do not. Not for one second. I let that faith slip. You know what Jesus said to him? Anybody know? Anybody can guess? Oh, thou of little faith. I mean, they're not even in the boat yet. Peter's still in the water. <laughs> still afraid. Still consumed. Jesus grabs them and says, Why'd you doubt? Why'd you get your eyes? Listen, this is Jesus, you know. This is how he operates. This is how he functions. <laughs> this is how he lives. Why did you get your eyes off what I said. That's what he asked Peter. Why'd you doubt? Why didn't you use your faith for this? Why didn't you apply your faith in real life situations? I've told you to do this. I've told you over and over, don't look at the storm, the wind, the waves. Don't look at it. When you look at it, you will sink. We just can't look at it. And this was the, le the lesson to Peter. Let's finish this story and we'll be done. This is what Jesus said to him, O oh, thou little faith, why'd you doubt? Why didn't you use your faith? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased, and notice the kind of faith they had. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, you're the Son of God. And that's not even what Jesus wanted. But that's all we give them. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're wonderful. You're great. You're the Son of God. And you know what Jesus keeps asking us? Why are you looking at what's wrong? Why are you looking at what's missing? Why are you looking at this world? Why are you looking at people? Why are you looking at anything except my word? My sayings, or today we're saying, <clears throat> the solution. Faith only looks at the solution. Amen. 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 coming up. Praise the Lord. Just a couple minutes here. I always like to, or the Holy Spirit always uh, inspires me to share something about what Pastor Rick said or, or uh, just he hears from the Spirit of God, we hear from the Spirit of God. And one of the things that he was talking about, about faith, uh, was that he said something, and, and I, we know what he meant because he taught it properly, but he said something, he said, you can use your faith on other people, but let me clarify. When God created Adam and Eve in the garden, if he was going to control human beings, he would have done it there. They would not have disobeyed God. You get what I'm saying? Your faith isn't, you cannot command people to obey you. You cannot command people to love you. You cannot command any of that. But what he did say, and he's right, is you can pray what Paul prayed, which I pray these prayers over myself, my family, the church, in Ephesians 1 and 3. You can pray, like he said, the spirit of wisdom over people. You can pray um, the word of God over them. But you can never use your faith, because if that were true, Adam and Eve wouldn't have sinned, and Jesus would not have had to come to die for our sins. God has given us a choice. He has given us free will. We can't force people 
to do anything. Even in marriage, you know, uh, I can't force Rick, and he can't force me. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to force each other. You're supposed to love one another, and you're supposed to pray for one another, but you're not supposed to try and force. If you try that, you will be greatly disappointed throughout my whole Christian life, even if, if members in my family do things that I do not agree with or I do not see that's proper in the word of God. In the natural, I want to go shake them and say, you are being ignorant. Please listen to your mother and father's teachings. But what the Lord always tells me is he always says, just say the word, just teach the word, just preach the word. So whenever I'm either talking to my family in texts that include both of my children, I always share the word of God. So that is what you can do. And then Jesus, who is the Holy Spirit, who is the word of God, can and will, I believe, speak to their hearts. But, but me trying to force them to listen, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to pray over the offering. But before that I do that, I just wanted to share a real quick story about, about the ocean. Uh, so yesterday morning, I'm, I'm actually writing a, an article about it. But yesterday morning I woke up and it was beautiful, it was sunny, and I was sitting and I started to have my applesauce and I was sitting and I saw the ocean and it's sparkling and it's beautiful and I talked last week in my sermon about hostile environment, and, uh, but on the outward that ocean looks beautiful. And all of a sudden I heard this real loud whistle, do, 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 like real loud, do, 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 do. and I had the windows closed. And we have a lifeguard that's just not far from, from where we live. And she was up on her feet with her flag, blowing that thing as hard as she could, pointing to a bunch of kids and people with boogie boards. And I'm going to tell you why, because I researched it. But at first, I was so annoyed, say annoyed. I was so annoyed at this woman because she just kept doing it. She kept doing it. And then the Lord used that as a teaching tool. If you listen to the Spirit of God, he'll teach you on, on things. So he showed me something. He said, what was she doing? And she did it like probably 20 times throughout the day. Stay with me. What was happening was kids and adults were taking their boogie boards past the sandbar. And because there was a high alert from the weather and from the Volusia uh, weather and, and everything, they said there was dangerous current in the water. I've been in that water before. I have been pulled by a very strong current years ago. Very strong, very scary. Say scary. scary. And if you don't know what to do, if you don't know how to stay calm and swim either to your left or to your right and keep swimming till you get out of that current, it can pull you out and pull you under. It's that strong. So the Lord reminded me. He said, she's a lifeguard. She is trained. She knows that there's current there, and she knows that those children and adults, you can be the, the, the uh, weather service and the, and the people who, who uh, look at the surf and everything, they said, you can be the best trained swimmer, and you can still be pulled by, out by that current. So anyway, so she's blowing this thing, and it would just annoy me. I would tell Rick, I'm like, what? so then I got to a place where I was like, I'm going to go down there, not to her, because she was doing her job. And I'm going to go to the people because she kept doing it at this group of family and friends that just kept going in past the sandbar. And I'm going to tell them. And the Lord showed me something. Uh, what I wanted to tell them, and I, and I would had, had, had the Lord said me to go out there. The Lord showed me something. He said, he said, I'm a lifeguard in life. My word, as Pastor Rick taught today, attend to my words and climb your ear to my sayings. Jesus is our lifeguard. He's our life source. That lifeguard that was out there, she was given wisdom and understanding about how dangerous that ocean was, and her whistle was a warning, say warning. Her whistle was warning them of danger. Listen. She did it about 20 times through, for hours. People would finally come in, then another group would go out, and I'd be like, what the heck? And, but she constantly continued to blow her whistle. And so after the Lord showed me, he said, she's doing her job. She's trying to help them. She's trying to protect them from dangers that they can't see with their natural eye. They can't see it. Look at me. They couldn't see the current. You can't see a current. Uh, you can see it in the water if you are trained to see that it's in spots. But naturally speaking, people can't see that current. 
So she was blowing her whistle, blowing her whistle, blowing her whistle. And that's what God does through his, uh, there's a verse in Proverbs that says, it says for, for children, even adult tr- children, listen, and for all of us. He says, listen to your father's instructions and do not forsake your mother's teaching. And if you read Proverbs chapter 1, he talks about everybody who won't listen. They won't heed. They won't heed warning. They won't heed correction. They won't heed wisdom because wisdom cries and shouts and lifts its voice. And then it, it lists all these bad things that can happen in your life. Well, that's the thief. But then at the end of Proverbs 1, it says, but if you listen, you'll have peace and joy if you listen to that wisdom. So what Pastor Rick taught today is for us to put our focus and our attention on his word for healing, for provision, for anything that you have in life. And when it comes to people, you don't have control over them, but you can pray for them. You can pray the word of God over them. And, And what God really wants you to do is, instead of trying to get people to control you, to teach us to love them and let them be free to make the decisions and their choices that they're going to make. But me as a mother, even if with, even with my adult children and my grandchildren and members in my family, I speak and I pray the word of God over them. That's, that's where I can get involved in their life. Other than that, I, I have no, God does not permit me to try and control them as he cannot control me. Okay, so I'm going to pray over the offering. For those of you who are watching on Facebook, we, we do thank you. People watch us uh, in Pennsylvania. They watch us here in Florida. They watch us actually all over the, all over the country, all over the world. Um, so those of you who are sitting here today and those of you who watch online, you know, God says that when you give, that a blessing comes on your household. There's a numerous promises about that. But when you hear the teacher, the Bible says, you are to give to the teacher. And Pastor Rick just taught a, a wonderful message, and we do it every week. So when you're hearing the word of God, the scriptures say that the, that the uh, preacher, that the minister is to live of the gospel. They that preach the gospel shall live of the gospel. So your tithes and offerings help us to do that, helps keep a roof over our head, helps us to uh, do the things that God's called us to do. So we thank you for that. And in that, for those of you who are obedient to the Lord's word, uh, you can text give Ponce to 53555, and our website is ponchchurch.com. You can also give to littlecitychurch.org for our Pennsylvania people. Thank you. You can also give Zell, transferred directly from bank to bank, instant with no fees, at twoponchchurch at gmail.com. And we do receive our offering at the front table. We thank you, everyone. Thank you, Facebook. 